and today we're going to be reviewing the Black & Decker LDX 120 20 volt brush drill. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, starting off at the bottom of the tool, we have the 20 volt battery slot, which will accept any of Black & Decker's 20 volt lithium batteries. And the battery slot is nice and firm and secure. It also features the spring loaded mechanism on the inside of the battery connector, which will uh, push the battery off when you uh, press down on the lever on the battery. And overall, I don't really have any complaints. There's no wiggling, there's no jiggling. And so quite frankly, it gets a pass. Moving on. And next up we have a drill bit holder, which is definitely one of my favorite features on this particular drill, and is definitely something I wish Ryobi would have kept around on their drills. Overall the drill bit holder is definitely doing its job perfectly adequate on this particular drill, and it can hold up to a 2 inch drill bit without you really having to worry about it being too large. To, uh, and having to worry about getting knocked out. As it stands right now, I haven't had any issues with the drill bits uh, falling out after using this drill quite extensively. And quite frankly, it's perfectly acceptable and I don't have any complaints. So it definitely gets a pass with flying colors from me. Okay, next up we have the grip. Now the grip on this particular drill is a fairly nice grip, mostly. I really do like the rubberized texture and the pattern that they decided to go with on the rubberized texture as well. The rubberized texture itself is a little bit on the harder side, but it's not so hard that it's uncomfortable, so it still gets a pass from me. And the overall texture of the pattern is, well, it's basically straight lines, which feels just fine. I don't really have any complaints. And the area on the back of the grip where the uh, orange uh, plastic kind of sees through definitely helps you grip the tool. So overall, the grip in those regards are perfectly fine. My complaint about the grip, however, is the fact it's a little bit on the small side. I have smallish hands, and my hands almost feel a little large on the grip. So it's definitely a small grip for a drill. So if you have larger or medium sized hands, you might find the grip to be a little bit uncomfortable. But if you do have smaller sized hands, you'll probably like the grip quite a bit. With that being said, let's move on. And next up we have the trigger. The trigger is made out of a hard black plastic and is completely smooth. It's a straight pull style trigger and I don't really have any complaints about the overall build quality. But there is a complaint I have and that complaint would be, well, there really are no super slow speeds and there are no super fast speeds and since there's no uh, speed selector switch at the top or uh, torque selector switch at the top, this is sort of a jack of all trades master of none situation. I personally would have liked to have seen a, uh, a, a speed selector switch at the top or torque selector switch at the top just so that you would be able to access some higher speeds or lower speeds. If that meant putting a larger motor in there to be able to do that, I think that still would have been an acceptable trade-off. And quite frankly, there are situations where I wanted slower speeds and I didn't have them, and there were situations where I wanted more speed and I didn't have those either. So it's kind of in the middle. Don't get me wrong, this drill can still do a lot of different tasks, but you really are hampered by the fact that you're, so, you're sort of missing your high ends and low ends, and so that's just something you need to be aware of if you are looking at purchasing this particular drill. With that being said, let's move on. And next up we have the LED light. The LED light is located directly above the trigger and will become activated when you pull the trigger and it will turn off as soon as you release the trigger. And it actually does a fairly good job of illuminating the area directly in front of the drill and is quite usable, unlike the lights on Ryobi drills, or at least the current generation of Ryobi drills. The Ryobi's old tri-beam illumination system was really good, but they decided to ditch that for new pathetic options that save them a little bit of money and piss off their customer base. But this particular light is really good, and to show you so, let's go ahead and compare it. Okay, starting off with the Black & Decker, you'll notice the area that is illuminating in right in front of the drill is actually fairly bright, and it does a good job of, well, giving you an adequate amount of light to see whatever project you're working on, which is helpful if you're working in a dark, cramp environment and you didn't bring a work light, although I still would always recommend bringing a work light. Okay, now with that being said, let's try the Ryobi and see how that stacks up. And as you can tell, the Ryobi is just utterly pathetic. The Black & Decker is definitely the hands down winner here, and I really hope Ryobi wakes up and realizes that you can't just shortchange your customers constantly when you have competition that, well, isn't shortchanging their customers, at least not in this regard. So with that being said, let's move on. And next up we have the trigger selector switch. Now the selector switch is located directly behind the trigger and slightly above it, and is made out of a hard black plastic which has rounded edges. It's got the same overall, de overall design as pretty much every other d uh, drill in the market. Your left is going to be your forward, the center will be your safety, and your right will be your reverse. And overall, I don't have any major complaints, but there is a minor complaint here, and that would be the fact that when the trigger uh, selector switch is in the safety position, the light can still become activated. Now, the motor won't turn on, but the light will still turn on, 
And this could be an issue if you're transporting tools and say a, well, bag of tools and something is resting against the trigger. There's a good chance that when you reach your destination, you could have a dead battery. So I would definitely recommend removing the battery when transporting this particular drill simply because of, well, the ineffective trigger lock for preventing the light from turning on. But with that being said, let's move on. And next up we have the clutch. Now the clutch on this particular drill is actually fairly easy to use. It has 11 different positions to choose from and it's easy to turn the selector switch in between the different modes. You basically have the 10 different uh, clutch modes and then you have the drilling mode that gives you the 11 modes, which is actually a little bit on the short side when you compare it against uh, some of its competition, such as the Warber, uh, Warrior from Harbor Freight, which features a 20 position clutch, or the Hearts 3 8 inch drill, which features a, well, 24 position clutch. So this particular drill, while it does have several different options to choose from it definitely doesn't have as many as its competitions and by as many I mean it's about half as good as the next competitor so quite frankly this is another area of the drill which is a little bit lacking but then again this clutch does work perfectly fine and it will disengage when you need it to as long as you well have the setting that you want it to disengage at so as far as I'm concerned as long as it's not electronic it still gets a pass with that being said, let's move on. And last but not least, we have the chuck. The chuck on this particular drill is a 3 8 inch chuck. And quite frankly, it gets the job done. It's got the standard design of the externals being plastic, the internals being metal. And in order to tighten it down, you have to, well, basically use both your hands, one hand to grip the back part of the chuck, and then your other hand to, well, tighten down the front part so that your bit stays in place. There's no ratcheting mechanism on the inside, so you want to make sure you get nice and tight. But as long as you get nice and tight, I didn't actually ever have any issues with the drill bits falling out. So as far as I'm concerned, it's actually a little bit better than some of the older Makita or Ryobi drills that I've used. So quite frankly, the chuck gets a pass for me and I don't have any major complaints other than the fact there's no ratcheting mechanism and it's a little bit on the short side for gripping, but then if you made it longer, then it wouldn't be able to get as, into as many tight spaces. So there is a trade off there. So it does pass with just minor caveats. But with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to the weight of the tool. Without a battery, the drill weighs 844 grams, which is a little under two pounds. And with a two amp hour battery, it weighs 1,209 grams, which is about 2.7 pounds. So overall, it's a fairly lightweight drill. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the size of the drill. Okay, so this is a, just a comparison to show you the size. The drill on the left is going to be the, a Ryobi uh, half inch compact brushless drill. And the drill on the right is going to be also a Ryobi half inch non compact non brushless drill. So it's basically just sort of a comparison to show you what the sizes are here. Overall, the Black & Decker drill is definitely a much smaller drill. It definitely weighs a, quite a bit less, and overall, it's going to be a better drill if you don't have much upper body strength or if you just need to get into tight spaces. But then again, the Ryobi Compact drill is also fairly good at that as well. As you can tell, the Black & Decker drill is definitely middle of the pack here. The Compact Ryobi is definitely shorter, but overall, it's still a little bit thicker, and at the end of the day, it's also a little bit heavier as well. So the Black & Decker drill actually is a fairly decent, well-sized drill for getting into tight spaces. Just remember that you're not going to have the same kind of power that you would with the Ryobi compact drill. So with that being said, let's move on. Okay, now when it comes to well drilling through thin plastic, it actually did a fairly decent job, but it's still not going to be nearly as good as a half-inch drill driver. And well, quite frankly, the torque is there, but I'm not really sure what it's rated at. When I checked Black & Decker's home website, it didn't actually list what the torque was rated at. It told me that the RPMs were 650, but the torque rating was nowhere to be found. And on Home Depot's website, under the torque rating, it just says zero. It has more torque than zero, but I would be willing to bet that there's a reason why they're opting not to tell you what the torque rating is. So yeah. Now I did test it with twist high speed drill bits and I was able to use a half inch twist drill bit just fine. 
and quite frankly, it did it in a fairly decent amount of time. It's definitely not as fast as, say, a uh, half-inch drill, but at the end of the day, it, the performance wasn't nearly as bad as I was thinking it was going to be. Let's try a spade bit now, though. Okay, as you can tell in the video, it definitely has enough power in order to use a spade bit, but the speed there is definitely hurting its performance, and when it get, comes to breaking through the other side of the board once the point goes through, it takes it a little while in order to do that. So overall, the performance isn't horrible, but it's nowhere near as good as a half inch drill. Let's try a larger spade bit now. Okay, so the spade bit we're using here is an inch and a half spade bit, and overall, I'm actually fairly impressed with how well it's doing, considering that it's a 3 8 inch drill, and they didn't list the torque rating. It's not as fast as it could be, but at the same time, considering the size, it actually is somewhat impressive. And it was able to make it all the way through this 2x4, so at the end of the day, I think that's a fairly decent performance, considering just what this drill is. Like I said before, it's nowhere near as good as a half inch drill, but it's still going to be better than, well, say an electric screwdriver. So this isn't a half bad option to look at. And it does a good job with drilling smaller holes for, well, screws or driving in those smaller screws as well. So overall, I've actually been fairly impressed just by how well this drill works. I do wish that it was a little bit faster or had the slower speeds, but considering what you're getting, it's not a half bad option to take a look at if it wasn't for the price. But we'll cover that in the pros and cons, which we're about to start now. Okay, first pro, 20 volt. 20 volt means it'll be compatible with your Black & Decker lithium batteries, and if you want to, you can purchase a third-party adapter and use other branded batteries on this particular drill driver. Just remember you do so at your own risk. Compact, overall, this is a fairly compact drill, especially when you, well, compare it against some older Ryobi drills. So overall, this is definitely a pro in my opinion. Lightweight, overall, this is a lightweight drill, and this can be helpful for a variety of different reasons. So this is a pro in my opinion. LED, the LED light on this drill is actually very usable and is better than Ryobi's newest generation of drills, which they've completely destroyed the LED on. So overall, this is a pro in my opinion. Power for size. Overall, I'm actually fairly impressed by how much power this little drill has considering the, its size. And quite frankly, when I got out of the box, I was thinking this was a joke, but it proved me wrong. So this is a pro in my opinion. And the best thing ever, a bit holder. Yeah, well, it might not be the best thing ever, but I really do like having the bit holder. It comes in handy in a variety of situations. So this is definitely a pro in my opinion. And the first meh is the grip. The grip is, well, it's great for people with smaller sized hands and there's nothing wrong with the grip. It's just going to be, if you have medium to larger size hands, it's definitely going to be a little bit on the small side for you. The chuck. The chuck has no real issues. It's just a little bit hard to get the drill bits tightened in there sometimes. And that's with my smaller size hands. If you have larger size hands, it could be a little bit more challenging. So with that being said, let's move on. Second gear, yeah, there is no second gear on this particular drill driver, which means you're going to be missing those higher speeds or lower to or higher torque settings. And that also will mean that, well, quite frankly, it's a jack of all trades, master of none, which makes it simpler to operate, but at the same time, definitely makes you feel like it's missing something. And the first con, and definitely the biggest thing going against it, is the price. Now, the price on this particular drill didn't used to be bad when you considered what you were getting. You were getting a drill, you were getting a charger, and a battery. Admittedly, a kind of a worthless small battery, but at least you were still getting a battery. And the issue is, well, the competitors on the market today, well, there's quite a few options to choose from that will give you pretty much the same kind of performance at a lower price. Now, I'm not going to say that the competitors have better build quality because I kind of doubt it, even though I haven't tested them, but you really need to consider the price when you're looking at this particular drill. Let's say that you wanted to find a drill that was about the same price. Well, you could pick up a half inch drill that's going to give you pretty much a better performance across the board for around the same price. And if you look around hard enough, you might be able to find one that includes an impact driver as well. And if you are looking for a smaller size drill, there's quite a few options that are also available. So quite frankly, the price is definitely, well, working against this particular tool and is definitely a fairly large con in my opinion. But if you can find this drill discounted or somewhere else, it's still worth taking a look at. With that being said, let's move on to the next con. The LED turns on when the trigger lock is on. Yeah, this isn't that big of a deal, but if you are transporting the tool with the battery inserted, there's a good chance it could drain your battery. So this is a con in my opinion. 
And last but not least, limited clutch. You only have 11 different positions on the clutch, and that's about half as good as its nearest competitor, at least when it comes to the price point. So quite frankly, I really think that having a few more clutch options would have been preferable, and this is the con in my opinion. And that is it for the pros and cons. Final thoughts on this particular drill driver. You know, after reviewing that Black & Decker work flight, I really wasn't in expecting all that much. But this actually did give me some surprises, and I think it's actually a fairly decent little drill. I think the build quality is good. I think it has enough power to get you through most light applications. And as long as you're not building a house or a shed or something, I think this is going to definitely be more than enough for most people's uses well around the house or apartment so quite frankly it is a decent little option probably the biggest con for it actually is the price and if you can find it lower than the uh, current asking price of around 60 us dollars i would definitely say pick it up especially if you're already invested in the black and decker system so with that being said let's end this video we'll see you next time god bless